thank you so much for um, being with us today and uh, taking this interview. So um, would it be okay if you gave like, a quick introduction, an overview of your work, um, just for the people like on the YouTube channel who are not as familiar? Uh, so I, I wear two hats. Uh, one, I'm uh, the head of the, the Buck Institute uh, for Research on Aging, which is, um, I guess, was one of the first ones uh, institute that's solely devoted to studying the biology of aging. Uh, we've been in business since uh, 1999. Uh, we have about 300 employees that all study uh, different aspects of, of aging research. Um, and the other hat that I'm wearing is a, is a scientist uh, that still runs uh, a lab that focuses on, on aging. And our areas of interest are the interface between metabolism, epigenetics, and the immune system. And so our focus is on trying to understand how does the environment uh, modify epigenetic regulatory mechanism. And we fo focus on a series of metabolites that are such as acetyl-CoA or NAD or beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone ester, a ketone body that all are talking to a number of epigenetic regulators. And we think that this dialogue between the environment and epigenetic regulators ultimately is one of the key drivers of how the environment affects the aging process. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, like the whole epigenetic, like the epigenome and how that relates to age is so interesting. So that's so cool that you're doing so much research into that, especially at, at the Buck Institute in general as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for making the time. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more about like how you specifically got into the field of aging and longevity. Um, if you, yeah. Uh, it was through in some way uh, happenstance <laughs> because uh, in which is sometimes some of the best things that happened in life happen when you do not really plan them. So my lab, um, before we, we worked on aging for about 20 years. And before this, we were focusing on epigenetic regulation. And so my lab cloned a family of epigenetic regulators called HDAC, so histone deacetylases. And we, we were focused trying to understand their role in, in, in the process of regulation of gene expression. And, and the ability of drugs that target these molecules to function as anti-cancer medicine and so on. And uh, it turned out that uh, sirtuins came uh, to the fore as potential regulators of, of, um, of aging. And was, we then decided basically to start studying mammalian sirtuins. And that's how we started our work on, on, on aging basically. So moving from one field to the other. That's really fascinating. Um, and it's kind of cool that like, I don't know, like I feel a lot of people, especially people who have been in the field for a while when it comes to aging, have like come into the field by like happenstance or just like things that sort of like led them. That, that's, really, that's, that's absolutely fascinating. And so, yeah, it does seem like some of the best things happen that way. So um, I'm wondering sort of what obstacles did you face getting where you are today? Um, are there any like obstacles you find like the general field of longevity is facing on another sort of tangent or? Yeah, I think, uh, well, the, the initial obstacle that, I, that we, we faced it was one of funding, because as you know, you know to, to run a lab is expensive and you need funding. And quite often to obtain funding, you need to demonstrate expertise. And so we were coming from another area and actually I was lucky at that time to get a grant from the Larry Ellison Foundation, who was uh, giving money at the time just for that purpose, to bring new people into the aging field. So that's how we, we got started. Now, if you think about aging, the aging field and the obstacles that it will face in the future is, um, th there are many. Uh, one of the, you know, the, the technology, the discoveries that have been made in the last 20 years have been really amazing in terms of our understanding of aging has really changed in a dramatic manner. One of the hope is that uh, all of this knowledge at some, some point is going to translate into human health and an increased human longevity. And, and so I would say the major obstacles that are going to be in our way is that it is extremely hard to, to develop drugs or to change humans' behavior. And one of the 
the greatest difficulty is going to, to be able to translate all of these discoveries into humans. And this is one area that particularly uh, interests me. Uh, I'm an MD by, by training. Um, even though I've done most of my research, my, my career in research, I, my original training was a, as a physician. And I'm passionate about the idea that we're going to be able to change the way humans age. And, but it's not easy uh, not for a number of reasons. One, there are many failures that occur between basic science and the clinic. And second, we are essentially inventing a whole new field. You know, there are no easy way to target aging uh, using medications. And so I think the field is confronted with a number of obstacles, both regulatory, but also simply technical. And uh, that's what we're gonna be working on in the next 20 years. Uh, in the next 20 years at the Institute is really increasing our relevance uh, to human health. That makes total sense, especially where like applicability of like, yeah, all these different, like these really awesome studies that are being done, especially with like mice and that kind of thing. And it's like, how do you actually, <laughs> how do you actually scale this to like what really, like what matters to us? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. Like, what do you think the most important thing to do to create progression and longe longevity long term is? I'm sorry, I, I did not hear that. The oh, sorry. Um. So, like, what do you think the most important thing to like that, that we should do that we should do now is to create like to create progression and longevity long term? Like, what should we do now to? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think um, we need first. I mean, two things. We need a lot more basic research. Um, I've, I've created the analogy that you know our understanding of aging is still um, fragmentary. We have uh, an understanding of many of the moving pieces that constitute the aging, and I, I'll refer to you know the hallmarks of aging is a is a is an important paper that sort of helped us to categorize the different facets of the aging process and how you know we can impact them. Um, what we lack is a is sort of a more integrated understanding we, of, of, of the aging process. We also lack an understanding of <clears throat> what are the key nodes in this network that we have to target to get maximum benefit. For example, we have a you know, number of drugs now that we know um, uh, target aging in, in, in some ways, significant more, more than others. Um, so how, how do we combine these drugs? Are we going to see synergies between these drugs? Uh, what is What are all the ways in which uh, we can um, really maximize the effectiveness of our therapies? And finally, you know how one of the things that has emerged out of the aging science is the whole concept of geroscience, uh, which came out from my colleague here at the back, um, uh, Gordon Lithgow, the idea that aging is the major risk factor for disease. I think that's a statement that's been validated. It is true, but the question is why and how. And, uh, and so I think there needs to be a lot more work trying to understand why is aging a risk factor uh, for the chronic disease of aging? And how can we use this knowledge to actually prevent the occurrence of, of these diseases? W one area that I'm particularly um, excited about is the idea that uh, medicine is is very good at treating diseases. Uh, this is, you know, we've seen many great successes in terms of heart disease and and cancer now and, and other treatments. Um, when medicine is really abysmal at preventing these diseases from occurring at the first place, and and I think this is where the aging space uh, comes in and could play a very significant role by providing some tools and understanding of what are the mechanisms by which the aging process leads to disease and by targeting aging itself uh, to lead to the suppression of the development of disease at the first place. So this is a concept that's been advanced in the field, this idea of a compression of morbidity, meaning that you know you, we spend right now a, a good 15% of our lives afflicted by these chronic disease of aging, and we know centenarians do a much better job. They not only live longer, but they spend only about 5% of their disease, of their lifespan afflicted by, by these diseases. So I think understanding all of this is really going to be uh, critically important. And this is what we're focusing on right now. That makes total sense. So sort of like understanding the basics, understanding um, how we can actually target, like, and understanding like geoscience itself. And um, 
Yeah, that's fascinating, especially like also the human, like also that kind of plays into like human research and like being able to like take this to humans as well. Um, that, yeah, that makes, that makes, that makes, that's very, that's very fascinating. Um, yeah, and I, I do think like, um, what's it called? I know that there are a lot of people in the aging field who advocate for basic biology research. And as like right now, a lot of it's just sort of on specific diseases, which is interesting, but it's not probably not going to have the scalability long term. So that, yeah, that makes total sense. I think you need both, you know, and I always make the case. Uh, that's, you know, there is no translation without more basic research. And, and, and we're not done understanding aging, far from it. There are still many mechanisms that are, that are poorly understood and that uh, for which we need a lot more basic research. So even though I'm, I'm more passionate right now about translation, uh, because in the long term, it will be important for our field to actually deliver uh, something to our society in, in a direct manner, in terms of health and so on, um, I'm equally passionate by basic research, and uh, so they're, they're both really important. One doesn't go without the other. Yeah, that makes sense. They can definitely like coexist in a very um, useful way. That 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 makes total sense. And sort of my final question is like. What advice do you have for high schoolers who are interested in longevity? Um, do you have any sort of advice for like how to learn about the fields? Or... Um, first, I, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, there's nothing that excites me more than to see uh, young people interested in, in the science of longevity. Because typically when, when I was a kid, uh, we thought we were immortal. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, it only for, took for me to reach, you know, um, uh, close to 60 to realize, wow, or well, 50 actually to reach that there's a, a lot of interesting signs there. So I think the, the promise for young high schoolers uh, to get into this field is that this is one area of biology where there are major discoveries that, re discoveries that remain to be made. Whereas you pick a field of research, uh, it's always more interesting to go in areas where there are a lot of uh, low hanging fruits. And this is clearly the field of aging research. So lots of discoveries to be made and important discoveries in the future. Now, how do you go about doing this? Um, I mean, in many ways, first, first you have to be a good student um, uh, and, and, you know, learn. There's, a, there's, even though I, a lot of remains to discover. There's already a very solid um, you know, body of knowledge that is forming the foundation of, of us moving forward. Um, I encourage you also to uh, join a lab for an internship. Uh, we have great internship programs here at the BAC. I cannot speak about orga other organizations, but I know there are across the country. The BAC is really excited about bringing young people to to our community uh, to help them learn and, and be exposed to what aging research is. So that, these would be the, the first two steps. Um, educate yourself and uh, come to visit the BAC and, and, and join our programs. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that'll be like pretty very helpful to all, um, all the high schoolers who are hopefully watching this um, video. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, also, I apologize for, apologies for any background noise, um, but yes, thank you so much. And thank you for interviewing with me. This is very, very helpful and also very insightful interview. And yeah, um, thank you for your time. It was great to meet you, Nina. And will you be at the meeting in uh, Copenhagen? Hopefully. Oh, 